What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here with Roxy Stryer on a little hypothetical questions for your Wednesday. Uh, we have a, a giant list of questions, and somebody actually tweeted us in today. I should check the Twitter to make sure I get this guy's name correct, because I think it was a pretty good question, though. This isn't what we're going with. Um, <laughs> runner-up, we might say. Yeah, a runner-up. Um, because we were sitting at lunch and a Beatles song came on mm -hmm. and Roxy had the genius to say, what if Beatles songs were TV shows? Yeah. And? And that's what we're going with. <laughs> Instead of the question that somebody tweeted and put a lot of time into and we appreciate and respect as well. Yes. Uh, crap. What was this? Uh, da, 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 is that not him? Da, 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 hey, great da, job. Da, da, Super da, da, excited da, da, da. to see TV talk again. Josh, are you? Sean Maroney. Sean oh, what if the Simpsons didn't exist? This comes from uh, Michael Tabone at Michael D Tabone. Uh, and I think we might do that one next week. We're going to do a Simpsons style uh, question that will oh, come yeah, yeah. into um, what this tweet was. So thank exactly. you, Michael, for sending it in. Uh, we appreciate it. And we appreciate all you guys watching. You can subscribe to the channel here. This is on the Collider Podcast channel, as well as the Collider TV Talk uh, podcast feed. So you can listen there, subscribe, rate, tell everybody that you know about it. Uh, follow me at Josh McCuga at Roxy Stryer on all the social medias. So... Um, you're probably thinking, well, if you were going to do What If Beatles songs were a TV show, why didn't you invite Scott Mance? Well, we just came up with this literally 30 minutes before we started Preparation recording. Preparation is professionalism. <laughs> Correct. And so I texted Scott Mance, which is the second best thing to actually getting him in the studio. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I guess we could have had him call in, but I don't know his schedule. Anyway, I said, Scott, what is your favorite show or favorite Beatles song? Because you know he's a diehard Beatles fan. Yes. And and then I asked, what would a TV show look like? And he wrote back, my favorite Beatles song is She Loves You, which is a great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, God, you picked that up so well. Roxy Stryer, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll be here all year. Yeah, all right. Uh, he said, she loves you. And I, lo I love that song, too. Me, too. It's really um, good. And it's nice when she does love you. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. You should appreciate and respect that. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, he said, I like the early stuff. Now, off the top of his head, it would be a high school love triangle rom-com musical. Seems like a hat on a hat on a hat. Like Glee, uh, set in 1964 with only Beatles music on the soundtrack. Uh, and so, yes. Feels like a miniseries, maybe. Feels like I don't a, think we're getting, what did Glee have, six seasons? Yeah. Did that have I mean, that many seasons? I just don't think we're getting that of only Beatles songs. Coming, yeah. Because we're just, there's a lot of them. There are. But there's not. And we had, we wrote out about 23, I think, Beatles songs, and we narrowed it down to 11. Well, because we were like, let's go through the top Beatles songs, and then there was yeah. a list of 79. Uh, where It's just like you know there's every too single. There's too many. There's so many. Yeah. So, yeah, we narrowed it down, and if you're at home and you're thinking, why didn't you pick this one? We're sorry. Well, but a lot of them... I'm not that sorry. A lot of their, their titles, too, lend themselves to a, a uh, This Is Us kind of a thing or a... Um, the show's already been done. Yes, Correct. You know, like uh, a little help from my friends was uh, was the theme song to Wonder Years, though the Joe Cocker version of it. Yes, you know? and we eliminated Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds because it literally would be an animated show about, about. Lucy in the Sky, probably with Diamonds or so. LSD. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So thank you, Scott Mance, for chiming in on this. I uh, love that. What if the Beatles songs it's a were great TV pitch. shows? Honestly, it, I would watch the heck out of six episodes of that. Do you remember that show, American Dreams? Did you ever watch that show? I think it was called American Dreams. No, but have you tried the ice cream flavor from Ben & Jerry's American Dream? No. Really good. Really? Yeah. Do you know what I haven't seen in a long time is Tonight Dough. The Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Dough. Don't, don't you know that I look for that? All the time. It is so good. And so I haven't good. I wonder so if they discontinued find. it. But talk to me about American Dreams. American Dreams <laughs> was a show that took place in like the sixties, sort of like a Mad Men, but in high school, and it was about these kids and this family and everything. And my mom loved it because she that was her youth. And my mom was at a Beatles concert at the old Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. She was one of those screaming girls, you know, a few rows from the edge. Uh and uh, it was it was basically about the sixties, so a more serious version of the Wonder Years. Because the Wonder Years was Wonder Years is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's amazing. Also, one of the only shows that can get away with what it did, which is making you fall in love with people that do not end up, spoiler, together. Right. Exactly. That always hurt me. It's Whenever I think of... I felt crushed by it, but, one, but life. But that's life. Because your high school or your grade school sweetheart doesn't sometimes end up being 
the one that you spend the rest of your life with. Shocker. But I really feel like they should have given us that. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I don't I disagree. mean, they gave us Zach and Kelly. Yeah. Right? If we're yeah. looking at quintessential Poor TV. Wayne. Man, that was a tough one. Okay, so here's our songs, our song list that we're going for. And we're going to start with Hey Jude. Then we're going to go to Yesterday. Then we're going to go to Here Comes the Sun. We're going to tell them all of them? Yeah. Oh. Well, so I'll t- tease so the show. Think about so they can think about it. Yeah, I just want that. But maybe we'll save one. Don't tell them. I'll tell them all but one. Okay. <laughs> Here Comes the Sun. Then we have a mystery duel show together. Uh, then we have Come Together. I Want to Hold Your Hand, Blackbird, Twist and Shout, Eight Days a Week, Yellow Submarine, and Ticket to Ride. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's just start at the top of the list. Let's start with Hey Jude. What does what if Hey Jude was, was a TV a show. was a TV show? So first of all, first thing I think of when I think of any show with Hey is Hey Arnold. Okay. So Move It Football Head doesn't quite work for a Jude. Do you, did you ever watch the show? Oh hey. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're. I think I know what you're talking about. Was it another like Nickelodeon type? No, it was a. Um, it was an animated show. Wasn't it Disney or Nickelodeon? Yeah, I think it was Disney. Yeah, I, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's totally made up. I totally made up that show. And no. You it. <laughs> yes. No. Oh, hey. What am I thinking of? I you know, know, I usually say if I don't hey, know dude. something. There's oh, hey, dude. Hey, dude. Shoot. <laughs> hey, dude. What is that? The Nickelodeon? Hey, hey, Jude is a spinoff of Hey, Dude. Hey, Dude. Wait, which one was Hey? That's what I must have been thinking hey, of. You know what's dude. so sad is that I'm not scared to look like a, an ass, so I always just admit when I don't know something, but that yeah. really felt like I knew that. No. Oh, hey, hey, Dude um, starred... Um, Travel Pumpers. It, they were, it was a spinoff of Travel Pumpers. It was actually a prequel to Travel Pumpers in a camp. No, uh, no hey, hey, Dude, dude. had Ben Stiller's wife. Yeah. Um, you know, played Marsha Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget the actress's name. Christine Taylor. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so Hey Jude, what does Hey Jude the TV show look like? And here's how the thing is I could either agree with you or I could pitch something totally different, well, depending on how I like your pitch. Well, I don't know what I'm pitching yet. Why is it on me? Well, do you look, want me to start? Well, I want to look up the lyrics. <laughs> the lyrics is literally Hey Jude. Don't make na, it. Na, 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 na. Yeah, but you don't know. There could be some hidden gems in there. Okay. We'll see. Some hidden, you ju- ju- some hidden Jude gems? Isn't J O Jade, not Jude? Okay. You think Jews? <laughs> We've had a weird day. We have had a strange day. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Yeah. Take a sad song. Make it better. Make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. Very true. Yes. Troubled troubled person not letting. So, mm, hey, Jude. Okay. So okay. here's my thought is um, my dad is one of eight kids, right? Yeah. And his oldest sister's name is Judy. And he calls her Jude. Mm. Okay, like like the song. Now a lot of people are like, do you know Hey Jude's about heroin? I'm like, I don't know. I hate when people tell me what songs are about. And is it's that just true like, about Hey Jude? I don't know. I feel like people just make do you up stuff. Oh, hey? Yeah. Well, Oh Hey was, was a about battle. Heroin. It was. Oh Oh H. Oh H. Yeah. And um, I really thought I knew that show. No. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> you. It wasn't a giveaway when I said, Oh Hey. <laughs> no, because that's what made me think like. Hey, dude, or whatever it was. It sounded hey, like that. dude. Yeah. Uh, so here's my my pitch for what Hey Jude the TV show looks like. My dad's one of eight kids. His older sister, Judy, is – she is the, you know, the oldest of the eight, and everybody looks up to Jude, right? So uh, the parents – you know, the parents are there, but all of the kids look up to Jude, and they're constantly going like, hey, Jude, right? Yeah. And um, Like, hey, Jude, can you do this for me? Hey, Jude, can you do that for me? Right. And she is just exhausted, but she it's sort of like um, uh, Emmy Rossum in... Shameless. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and Jude, is she never gets like some time by herself, right? And the entire show, she's taking care of all the brothers and sisters because maybe the parents... She's Jude. Yeah, maybe the parents were like killed in a plane crash in the, in the pilot. Maybe there's one parent, but they're not doing very well. That, well right. That's kind of shameless. Even. That is pretty much shameless. Yeah. So the parents were killed in a plane crash, but Jude was 18, and so she took on the whole family at age 18. Mm, how, and how young's the youngest? Like four. seven, four. Wow, five, that's five, a lot maybe? to deal with. The same age as the kid in Liar Liar. Because he said it's his fifth birthday. Okay. And I just saw Liar Liar like two days ago, okay. or at least the beginning of it when it was on. And that I feel like that kid could be the youngest you could get an actor to actually act in a sitcom. Okay. Like a Raven Simone in 
um, Cosby Show. The Modern Family kids were like that age too when they started. I feel like Luke was probably like seven, eight when it started. How old was Lily? Lily was a two-year-old. Oh, yeah, adopted. She was a better that, actor at yeah. two, an actress at two. Uh, that's mean. I'm sorry. But she was kidding. It's opposite day. But um, <laughs> um, <laughs> nicely done. Hey so Jude. hey Jude, hey Jude, has to look after the family, and it's kind of like Party of Five, where they don't have parents, but they have Jude, and Jude is the staple, and so. It's, you know, Judy, Johnny, Eddie, Danny, Teresa, Rosemary, Vicky, uh, Marky. And those are the, your eight kids. That was very and, incredible hunting of you. Yeah. Uh, well, that's my dad's brothers and sisters. Oh. So, and they're, you know, they're they're the family in town. So the fam- like the town tries to rally around them, but the town can't take care of them. And everybody's looking up to Jude as this 18-year-old. And she struggles with having to go to college. It takes place now, you know, but she struggles about having to go to college or, you know, working and supporting the family kind what of situation. If, what if we kind of cross that with a little Batman situation where oh. instead of being, you know, shameless, then they're from a very poor community. Maybe they're really rich and she has to like take on the family business at the same time in order to keep their estate and take care of the family. Oh. Hey, Jude. But do you think because of all this money, they have like a an Alfred? Maybe. But and that could be kind of cool. Yeah. So they have they have an Alfred, but maybe she's it's a it's a woman, so it's like no, no Alberta. superpowers, but yeah. No superpowers, just a family business, and they don't think that Jude can take on the family business because she's not smart enough. She's actually a genius. Yeah. But then some but of she the... doesn't do well in school because she's always taking care of the kids. Now. Right. Yeah. And she's she... smart, wicked smart. See now, now we have like family power drama, almost like a uh, Succession. I still haven't watched. That's great on HBO. Oh hey. So and hey Jude is like the the kids are always like hey Jude and yeah. the people in the business are like hey Jude yeah yeah I love it let's yep that's it okay uh, yesterday now he, here's my pitch for yesterday uh, are you gonna make it sad no okay, I'm good, not gonna make it sad the songs the sad song yeah uh, it's a, and it's slow and it will make you cry it's not like Dave Matthews Band Satellite can I tell you what just happened what happened I just googled yesterday and you know when you don't finish the rest of your Google search and yeah. the first thing when you type yesterday into Google is the Beatles song yeah I would imagine when you type the word yesterday in, you would think that would be the first thing that pops up yeah not like the days no what, well, what, what else you can't google yesterday why not like what happened yesterday I mean, is that Anything a, is that a new, website? Like, you would think there's a website called What Happened anything, Yesterday. But that's the first thing that I just I'm surprised by that. Uh, I'm surprised it's not Don't Say Goodbye Yesterday, the Boys to Men song. You are surprised? No, by that? I'm not. Come on, Roxy. Uh, yesterday, here's my here's my pitch. It's a sci-fi show, right? And he can't get to today until he solves the major problem of yesterday. So it's a like reverse time travel. So he wakes up today, but he can't actually move forward until he goes back to solve what caused the problem today. Does mm-hmm. that sound too confusing? No, I kind of get what you're saying, and I like that a lot um, because you, every day you, he gets the chance to go back and fix one thing about the day and move forward. Yeah. Correct. I like that, uh, and I think that could definitely work. I also thought about kind of a um, – a mo- memento type show mm. that goes backwards. Oh, so we start at the, at the end of the day. Yeah, and we get back. So it's like the it's like the my favorite Seinfeld episode, which is the it starts at the beginning and ends at the beginning. Yeah, it starts at the end and ends. At now the beginning. I don't know if the whole series is doing that or each episode is doing that, but it would be kind of wild if we had an entire series that every macro micro every day we go to yesterday yesterday. Uh huh. That could be kind of interesting. And then the series ends when, like, let's just say part of it's a love story. I mean, you have to have a love story in there. Is it, it starts on the day that she, they meet, right? Like, so your last episode of the finale, it's almost like How I Met Your Mother, but it's like the last episode of the series is the day they met, and the yeah. first episode of the series is the day she dies. Yeah, yeah. So how does one get there? Like, where does it lead to? How does it reverse? Or have you ever seen the, it's a musical, so probably not, the no. last five years? It, they made it into a movie, but it's no. it's Jason Robert Brown. It's one of the be- my favorite musicals of all time. But they, one of them's living forward while the other's living backwards. So, like... Like Benjamin Button. No, no. The, the way the story is being told only. So, oh, okay. like, the first scene is the end of the relationship. The next is the beginning because we're hearing, we're seeing her story move forward and his story move backwards. Oh. So we could do kind of like a every other episode or half the episode is the end, half of it's the beginning. Ooh. A little tricky. Okay. 
Now that's that takes some seriously creative writing. Well, you need this would need to be on a Netflix or Amazon or Hulu where you have Binge. ten episodes before you you know it's been picked up as a ten episode. One hundred percent. You have it all written out before you start. This it. is almost one of those shows where you and a buddy develop it and write out like five seasons in a Bible. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because so, you need a framework. You can't pitch this show without a serious flesh out of a framework. Yes. But it could be really cool. Could be very cool. All right. Could be cool. Uh, our third is Here Comes the Sun. Do, 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 do. I cannot hear that sentence without doing that. I don't, I, yeah, I think it's kind of like if somebody says sail away and you're like, come sail, sail away, away with me. Sticks. Yeah. Come sail away. Come sail away. It goes yeah. from low to high real quick. Real quick. They're pretty great live too. And they're the Steelers theme song, Renegade. Sticks does Renegade. No big deal. What are you feeling for Here Comes, Here the, comes the, sun. the Sun? Okay, here's my thought. Okay. It's, 10,000 years in the future, okay? Maybe mm-hmm. maybe less, I don't know. But the sun is coming closer and closer to the earth. There's been like a seismic shift, but the oh. earth the earth it like people say if something gets knocked off its axis, it'll happen very fast. But there's some sort of some kind of gravitational pull that the sun is being pulled towards the earth, but the earth is not being pulled towards the sun. Right? Wow, you took this very literally. Yeah. He, yeah. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Dot, dot, dot. Uh-oh. Yeah. And the earth is warming, right? And that sounds impossible. <laughs> the global's warming? The global's warming. Wow. And you think I like 10,000 years in the future that we would have gotten past, you know, like our technology would be insane. We have flying cars, but we still can't beat the physics. If you listen to a scientist, there are a lot of things that are, are working against us as far as those kind of things, as far as physics go. But now that the earth is getting closer to the uh, the well, sun, the sun getting is getting closer, closer to the earth, earth, certain parts of physics are working. Again, like they're different now. And we're finally able to make some technology jumps. But we don't know how to stop the earth from this this rapid warning and we we know that in the next 40 to 50 years the earth and the sun will collide and it's just a matter of time before that sun gets so close that the earth melts so what do we do, do in that live? time like what does society live like correct what does I that look like i love that i think i like that better i was thinking <laughs> a completely different direction uh i was thinking more of like a talk show because <laughs> You know, <laughs> here comes the sun is so happy to me <laughs> okay. as a song, like sure. you know. And so it's like it's, wake up like San Francisco. It's be all right. No, I was thinking more like you find people at very low points and then you present them gifts and like moments of hope and presence, kind of like Oprah and Ellen and whatnot. Okay. But the whole show is based off of finding people that need help and then bringing that help. Like here comes the sun, sun sure. being a positive thing in my situation as opposed to yours, which it's a life threatening. Uh, body of but, flaming fire that's yes, coming towards us. a global crisis. Yeah, I like yours better. Let's right. go with yours. Okay. I do like your Here Comes the Sun. Now, is it a reality, like is it an actual talk show or is it a like scripted, a scripted mm-hmm. behind the scenes talk show? Like, welcome to Here Comes the Sun. And like how they actually pick who they're going to. That Correct. could be wild. Like the unreal of Oprah's and Ellen's. Correct. Oh, God. That could be fun, I've right? i some stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. But see, I like yours too. No, we're going with yours. Okay. It's better. Now, the mystery one. Should we save the mystery one until the end? Or should we just do the mystery one? Mm, Save it. Okay. Our next one is Come Together. Yeah, you know, this this does have a lot of remnants of a This Is Us. I was just going to say. I would rather see it go in a direction of, like, uh, Friends from College. Did you watch that show on Netflix? It's really good. I like that. That was the one with Keegan, Keegan yeah, Michael Key, mm-hmm. and all those guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so coming back together, reuniting. I think we could do it instead of college. If we want to switch it up, we could do, like, a, a high school, their 10-year reunion. That's the start of the show. Is it a miniseries? Yeah, a miniseries. They come back together. Um, or it could be something sadder, like the death of one of their friends, but that's kind of million little pieces. Right. But they, they're coming back together and like trying to reunite while they're all home and the friendships and the awkwardness and like, what if it was an anthology, right? And we had five seasons and it was the 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, 40 year and 50 year high school reunions of these six best friends and how their lives changed, like meeting at the reunion, how their lives changed via flashbacks of like major points in their life. What if we combined that with yesterday and we start at the 50 year reunion and the last episode is the 10 year reunion? Whoa. Mind blow. We're taking Beatles songs and mashing them up like a glee. Yeah. Hearken to a Scott Mance idea. Yeah. That's actually really good. That'd be wild. Yesterday, we come together. Mm. 
come together. Come yesterday. together, yes. No, that's probably better. <laughs> yesterday, we come. <laughs> it was trying. It was, it was a little. Off. I'm an idiot. That's my you bad. Are not, you I, are not. I apologize. Come together yesterday. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Go going. Okay. Um, I want to hold your hand. Now this is the kind of show that I could all about s- how <laughs> you want a a. I just sounded like you were saying this is the kind of show. <laughs> Although we know what happened the last time I tried to sing along to this song, we had to. It's the one thing we've ever had to cut out of this show. We so. I like uh, <laughs> gingerly approach Remsen and be like, so Roxy may have said something a little controversial, super inappropriate, not the best. Um, <laughs> okay, so I want to hold your hand. I think is a uh, like a Disney live action show in high school, middle school kind of a situation. It starts like seventh grade, eighth grade, and goes until their senior year. So that's it's a it's a finite timeline. They don't go after. So like a boy meets world kind of situation. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's a cute coming of age. Do you remember? I mean, I don't know. You're you're, you're a lot younger than me, so maybe you were well, a little. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're a little more. Se- you guys were a little more sexually advanced, I think, ten years like later. But so I think like the coolest thing you ever did was hold hands with somebody in like the fourth or fifth grade. No, I, that definitely. I remember. I didn't hold hands with somebody until sixth grade. Okay, so I remember holding hands. Then it happened very fast after that. But yeah. at that point, uh, holding hands was huge. I held and hands. It was awkward because guys' hands were so sweaty so and clammy. wet and clammy. And but so were girls too. No, I had dry, wonderful hands. Oh man, stubby, but it felt nice. <laughs> stubby but clam. Stubby yet not clammy. Yeah, it's like slimy yet satisfying. Have you ever like? Have you ever held hands with somebody that it wasn't the, the first time you were kind of like, oh, these aren't bad? Because sometimes, because like my wife, her hands always seem to be the same temperature, right? Great handhold. They don't get too sweaty. They don't get too clammy. And I feel like that was a. That's a, how you knew. That's how, It was one of those things. I was like, that's great. She's yeah. not clammy, right? I just, holding somebody's hand is such an interesting concept. I like. Yeah. I can't picture. We're definitely more of an arm holding yeah, couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I get that. But I my a couple of my high school girlfriends had really cl- had really clammy hands. Your clammy hands just dropped that yeah, pen. Yeah, the old old sticky hands McGee over here. Um but I, and I remember like in sixth, like fifth, sixth grade when I would, you'd watch a video in class and you'd sit by the girl that you liked and you'd like go to hold her hand. I think I held like Allie Henderson's hand real early. Ooh, uh, Allie. Liz Rolick, uh Carolyn Romano. Yeah, that was. Wow, we're going first and last uh, name. Well, they Shout out. Great. Shout out. They're all like married and, and good hand holders. Yeah, good, great hand holders. But the, uh, back then, I think everybody was so nervous that your hands did get clammy. So maybe like the impetus of it is sort of like a Wonder Years where he falls in love with Winnie Cooper in the first episode. But he and his buddies, he knows he's in love. Let's just call her, you know, Laura. And this he, is Corey and Topanga. It's Corey and Topanga. Did, did, why did they? Was their first thing holding hands? No, but just he was in love and yeah. But all he's ever wanted to do was well, hold was, love, was like hold her hand, and she was always maybe she was a little nervous about like how her hands felt or maybe she yeah, had weird hands. Show on that. What if she didn't have hands? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so like I want to hold your hand dot 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 because you don't have hands yeah, um, so, I feel like no okay. but, but I do see what happened there but maybe the, the, the whole thing is I want to hold your hand and it's it's like this platonic not relationship thing is like he's always been in love with this girl but she hasn't been in love with him and he is is her best friend all through and all he wants to do is hold her hand because the first episode he sees another guy hold her hand and he's just like I'll never get that Mm -hmm. and so we have that constant struggle of you know the friend zone and trying to get out of the friend zone and then maybe by the series finale they are they find he finally gets to hold her hand I'd like it a lot I like it a lot but I will say there's so many love songs out there that this one is not necessarily, and we could take it more of like a family, like a father son or mother daughter, mother son or okay. father daughter, where like they are in a strange relationship and all like the dying wish of the sick parent is like I just want to hold your hand, like be by my side kind of thing. So the the hard relationships of estranged children. What about a Black Mirror? Not. A Black Mirror type of show that each, like an anthology, that each episode is different, and it revolves around the hand-holding. Hand holding. 
I love that. So, you know, like you said, episode, it's about that. Yeah. You're holding your dying, you know, uh, friend's hand in the hospital, your grandmother or whatever, you know, like a grandmother and a daughter kind of thing or mother, daughter, uh, you know, like a girl, a first kiss, kind of like a first or hand each hold. Each episode ends with a hand hold. Yeah. Or, you know, like or a, somebody at war like loses you know, a hand. Yeah. Or like need to hand some a hand up or something. Yeah. yeah this I might like be this. our best one. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. I want to hold your hand. Yeah. It's like kind of cool. Episodes, yeah. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight episodes. An hour long. You know, one's comedy, one's Somebody's drama. Steal some of these. Damn it, they are. All right. We're so smart. Next, next is I think we're going to go in the same direction on this one. This is Blackbird. Yeah, I think that this one's got to be like our weird sci-fi. This is our Black Mirror. Is this one. our Black Mirror? Because I was thinking, is this our superhero one? What do you mean? Like Blackbird. Is there was like it's a, the there did like, it's like no, Hawkman. Yeah, Hawkman and Hawk Girl, but it's Blackbird and she is, you know, singing in the dead of night. That her, but you know, and is that in, the lyric? Blackbird dead singing of, in the dead of it's, night. It's dead of yeah. night, right? Not day of night. We're looking, We're looking it up. We're looking it up. All your life, you're, you're only, only waiting, waiting for this moment, moment to arise. arise. <laughs> we did not harmonize that well. You, uh, do you want to go up or down? Uh, I'll go up. You, Do you okay. want to go down? Yeah, okay. Right. You were only waiting no, for oh this God, moment that... <laughs> to arrive. No, you, gotta... you were only waiting Black. for this moment to arrive. And then you got to go. You were yeah. only <laughs> waiting for this. No, never mind. Uh-huh. Um, so I was singing. But see, everybody's like, oh, so the Blackbird song is what's the killer thing. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't think so. I think the Blackbird is kind of like the crow, right? Because like, that's like Black Canary. like a ca- that, the That's what canary I'm saying. Cry. So take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to arise. Uh, what if the blackbird is an angel that was sent up from hell? And his, her, his, both of them, whatever. Like Lucifer. His wings were clipped. Like Lucifer. Is that? Yeah. Oh, that's Lucifer? That's Lucifer. Oh. Wow, you just pitched Lucifer. <laughs> you could have made Lucifer. <laughs> I did not watch Lucifer. That's my bad. That's on pretty that unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and his wings are clipped. Crap. Wow. Or Blackbird could be like a code op. Like mm. this could be a, like Operation Blackbird. Oh, like a Jack Ryan. Yeah. Okay, keep go go on. Yeah. I'm listening. Well, I I did some of the heavy lifting. You, you <laughs> maybe you wheelbarrow it through. Okay, so what if it? If what we, is op Blackbird? But what about this? What if? And this is kind of goes with your Black Mirror thing. I know we keep going through two anthologies. Yeah, because but if why this not? is but if each episode of Blackbird. Is a different operation called Operation Blackbird, and it takes you to, from different war to different war to different war. It's like World War One, World War Two, the Mexican American War, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. Let's see how many wars you can name. Keep going, um, keep going. The War of eighteen twelve, the War of Roses. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the first Persian Gulf War, the second Vietnam. Persian War, Vietnam, Korean War, uh, mm-hmm. the French and Indian War. Why are you uh, killing it? The Thousand Years War, the Hundred Years War. Your history teacher is so proud right now. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Schumacher. Yeah, the, the f- <laughs> Mrs. Sh- Mrs. Who's my best history teacher? Probably Mrs. Slavin. Mrs. Slavin. She was hot. Oh, I loved her. Really? Me and my buddy talk about it all the time. Wonder where Mrs. Slavin is. Oh, Mrs. Slavin, if you're listening to this, please just call. No. <laughs> hey. Hey. You know? you, every kid has one crush on a teacher. Every single kid has at least one. Mm-hmm. And there, you know, and therein lies the rub. Uh, so Operation Blackbird across all the wars? No. So therein lies the rub. Yeah, is that a masturbation term? No, I think like isn't that like a term? And therein lies the rub. I don't know, but I literally thought you were saying in there in li- in lies the rub. <laughs> no, and I was and thinking tub. the same thing, and I was like, wait, hold on, let me Google. And therein and lies there the rub. And lies the rub, and by that I mean <laughs> every high school kid beats off to somebody. Here it is, and therein lies the rub. What is it? Uh, to sleep, perchance to dream, A, there's the rub. For in the sleep of death, what dreams may come, therein lies the rub. Is it a Shakespeare thing? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember I th- that. I think it's, uh, it's, what's it called? It's Romeo and Juliet. No way. Yeah. How do I not remember this? I haven't read it in a very yeah. long time. Uh, therein lies the rub. Fine. Yeah. What are you whispering to yourself? No, I'm reading Shakespeare's, yeah, okay. I've lost him to Shakespeare. My, you will never lose me to Shakespeare. I am not a Shakespeare fan. I just find him. To but there's be, no music. 
<laughs> there is no music, but it's so confusing. My brain doesn't work like and therein that. Therein lies the rub. And therein lies the rub. Uh, what do you think? So, do you like the anthology of a military? Yeah, or do you I think, think so. I think Blackbird just lends itself to operation very well. Right. And right. maybe maybe it is a military superhero show. Or what? So, Black Operation Blackbird is this this person that's been a part of all these major and wars. Put to sleep like every like a universal every soldier. War. Yeah. It's not bad. Now we're talking about some sci-fi, and each season is a different war. So maybe each season's four episodes. Mm. So you get like a story arc through World War One, World War Two, Civil War, Revolutionary War. Very you know, cool. like the Crusades, yada yada yada. Like William Wallace, they had a black bed there. William Wallace. William Wallace. They had a black bed. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Not the best. Uh, Twist and shout. This is definitely a reality competition dance show or mm. of dance and singing together. Because we have I yet to see that. And Mr. Penn State over there, you know what I think we can do? What? We can make some money for the good people out there. We really this could. could. This could be a dance-a-thon type dance thing. Marathon? Whatever they're doing, make, the longer they do it, the more money they make for charity. I like that. So how long can you legitimately not... Jump rope for? How long can you hopscotch for? How long can you twist, twist for? for? Yeah. How, shout. shout. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe it's your t- every episode you're trying to break a new Guinness World Book of Records record. And if you break it, $100,000 go to the charity of your choice. That show sort of already existed. What was it? It, I, it? I think it was called like Record Breakers or something. And they would try and break. Because my friend Darren Capozzi broke the most m- jokes mm. said in a minute. So maybe it's, wow, weird. Maybe it's just goals then. Like you set the goal for Twist and Shout, and if you hit it. Yeah. Okay. Like whoever goes longer with it. So it's like a reality dance competition money earning charity show. Yeah, I don't think it's just dance, but dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the hats. Or it could be like a, a reinvention of American Bandstand. Where you go to high schools and you have a dance competition between high schoolers, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like uh, Greece, you know. Aren't they doing the hand jive in that part? Mm, boy, the hand jive, Is that, baby. That's during the, yeah. Th- right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, eight days a week. This one. I was thinking sci-fi, but then you said something and okay. it kind of got me. I just think this is the working woman. Okay. She, gosh, she works so hard. Eight days she, eight days a week. Yeah. And uh, just, you know, watching. Have you uh, checked out? I just out? want one day Get off. off. Yeah. And she's a mom and she's single and yeah. she's working every hour of every day. Did uh-huh. you watch? What the hell is the one? Ugly Betty. It, nope. It's on just now. I've only seen the first episode. Jane the Virgin. And, nope. And I think that Amy Poehler produces it, but I'm not positive. Uh, and it's on network TV right now. They're married, though. It's an Indian woman who's beautiful and a comedian that you know is in a lot of different things. I know I'm not giving you a single name. <laughs> this is legitimate. That's a pretty rotten clue. Uh, you know, everybody knows. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Christian A. What the, what the hell is the name of the show? Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to look it up. I don't you think I can talking. Google that. You keep talking while I look it up. Okay. I can find it. Now, here's my thought for eight days a week is you have seven days in a week and you get to relive one of those days over again. And that's your eighth day of the week. Every week. Every week you get one day to relive from the week to see if it would like, I don't know, that maybe sounds too close to yesterday. No, because we what just... If, what if in the future eight days are now in a week in order to, and the year is now con- like condensed down to, so if you... So how does that change? So you change 52, 52 weeks now become, you add, you know, whatever. I don't know. I, I feel bad. I feel bad is the name of the show? Yeah, you haven't seen this yet? I have not seen that. Wow, oh, it's really. I saw the first episode and it was so good. Really? Yeah, it, it was. I mean, I've seen that poster, but I've never seen the show. The one episode was so funny, uh, and she's just this working woman. She's working at this like tech place. It's okay. almost like Silicon Valley meets Parks and Rec. Okay. Because it's like she's the one woman in the like really yeah. grinding. She's got the kids. But I she's do, got the family. I do like this version of eight days a week of a working mom. Do we make the husband a schlub or do we make the husband a working dad? But he's just like or constantly we have a traveling. Gilmore girl situation. No husband at all. No husband at all. Maybe it's a woman who we see her dating. Well, well, here's this. What if it's a woman that um, maybe your husband died and she, they never got pregnant, and so she had um, artificial insemination. And she oh, had. And she went and had his kids. And she had his kids, right? 
and they knew he was going to die. Maybe he had like cancer or something, and they knew he was going to die. And when she artificially inseminated, she had twins. So she has twins. She has a job, and she has these like ghost conversations with her husband, who's kind of around, and she has no time to date. Uh, but some of like the dating fails that she has gone through or something, you know, like guys are kind of throwing themselves at her, but she has no idea that guys are hitting on her because she thinks she's just this schlubby mom, but she's actually kind of put together when it matters. I'm obsessed with this. And also, what if he writes her eight letters a week or something like for her to read for the first year, like or whatever, sends her. You, have you ever heard of this when people yeah. are, know they're going to die? Yes, I love you. They, is that what they do? They send it in the mail? I think P.S. I Love You was like he died, but then in the future she got letters. It was kind of sci-fi-ish, yeah, weird. I and don't that was know, like Gerard but something, Butler movie, something I think. where like he's still helping advise her or whatever. I think maybe it. Yes, I love that. I'm trying to think of like if it's not it's eight letters a week. Maybe the eight's too many. Maybe just eight days is because she's working so many and whatnot. Right, and she's got this letter that she constantly look at, and it just says day eight on it. And she always pulls it out when she's feeling bad, and she reads. Maybe that was like a thing. Maybe their song was eight days a week because mm-hmm. I always thought that they were working eight days a week. And so he's he wrote this letter, and it says on the eighth day. And when he so whenever she, and we don't know what's on the letter until the last episode, episode. of the series. Mm-hmm. And you're constantly wondering what she does. And it's like a longish letter. There's like three pages of the letter. But it, she, all, whenever we see her reading it, she's always crying. And maybe at the end of every episode, she's reading the letter from the husband. And we don't know what's on the letter. But maybe we hear like snippets of it throughout the series. But we never hear the actual full letter. That's kind of cool. And I like that. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she loves you. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I like that. Eight days a week. All right. Uh, this one was easy. I think we get it. Yellow submarine. Mm-hmm. Sitcom. Sitcom on a live, submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. <laughs> yeah. It's um, literally we've got our, our take the Parks and Rec kind of cast or the office cast. Put it in a military rec- submarine, and, right? And put it in a submarine. That's yellow. Yeah. Um, and it's the first ever international di- like diplomatic submarine that is trying. Maybe the world is now underwater. I'm sure. Could yeah, we do that? Like around. sort of, and they are a diplomatic submarine of peacekeeping missions mm. under the water because the polar ice caps have melted. This is like 200 years in the future, and people are wow, living in submarines. Is so, so soon. I know. Well, we won't be around. I don't, um, I don't know that. We don't. <laughs> don't think like that. Uh, and this is like a peacekeeping hysterical mission of a yellow submarine. Yeah. And the Beatles music is one of the few things that most definitely survived Pretty the much underwater itself, pop. Honestly, one hundred percent. Yeah, get the, like the cast from Always Sunny in it. It's fine. Oh, that'd be great too. Yeah. Always Sunny. Yeah, yeah that's in a submarine. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ticket to ride. So I feel like this is a runaway situation now. Oh. I don't know if it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a brother, sister, but I think that they're coming from like either an abusive home or or from a like situation. Runaway they train, never going, going back. back. Wrong way on a one way track. track. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And so ticket to ride, one ticket, please. One, and the two of them run away and start a life together. Okay. And again, don't know boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister. One person. Okay. Don't know. What if? We scratch all of that. No, no, no. <laughs> this is my thought. Because okay. when I hear like Ticket to Ride, I think of Music amusement park. park. Right? And you have one of those like, and maybe this is one of those summer release shows where uh, a guy and, and a girl that he loves, sort of like that movie Adventureland, but good. Mm. And even though that took place in Pittsburgh, it was shot in Pittsburgh, and I wanted that movie to be great. I didn't love that movie per se. Uh and so these kids were, it's sort of like Notebook. Remember how they meet at an amusement park in the summertime yeah. at a fair? Mm-hmm. So these kids in the summertime work at this, this amusement park. And maybe it's at a vacation destination. Maybe it's just, you what know. What year are we talking? I think like late 80s, early 90s. I think it's sort of a period piece, but not too far back. That like you have nostalgic the, enough. Nostalgic enough. You know, no cell phones. You know, we don't want that. Nobody wants cell phones anymore. Um, True. Or you could have it, it now. It actually really mess up television. It really did. Seeing everybody all the time. Oh, it's yeah. the worst. Uh, but it, yeah, it takes place maybe at one of those carnivals. It's only open in the summertime. So it's one of those summertime series and all the magic. And it's like, I got a ticket to ride. And, you know, maybe there's some because, you know, I lived in uh, Shore Town for a bunch Ooh. of summers and you would fall in love with sure, you know, Shoebies. I love this. I love this. But thinking of carnivals. There is a show to be made about carnies. There was. It was called Carnival. It was on HBO. Mm. <laughs> I didn't see it. 
<laughs> it's actually pretty good. It's it's creepy. It's weird. I bet. Yeah. The whole life. But, or maybe it's like a circus TV show, you know? Kind of. Gotham does it sometimes. Does it? Mm, <laughs> it's Gotham. <laughs> Uh, so we aren't on agreement on Ticket to Ride. Oh, I'm in, I'm in on it. Okay, you're in I on it. I still that. like my runaway idea, too. I do, too. A ticket to Ride on a train? It's just not fully fleshed out. Hobos? Like, if I pitch that in a room, they're like, give, give me more. Give me something else? Could you see more of the amusement park summer carnival thing? Yeah, but not for a show, for one season. Oh, okay. Sort of like the Malibu Sand seasons on uh, Sable Well, the actually, Bell? though, if, if what we did was we did the OC... But ticket to ride, and it's just every year that's where we're going back. Like we're going back to the yeah. thing. Yeah, I know. I could see it. Yeah, so, you, that wins. You know, like the I don't uh, say for like instance in the Jersey Shore, a lot of the bigger piers have amusement parks on them, like Ocean City, New Jersey, Wildwood, New Jersey, Seaside Heights. They have amusement parks on it, so they're yeah. the kids. And I always think about those those seasonal help that work in. At the amusement park on the boardwalk or something like that and the love triangles that happen from that. Because, you know, yeah. you fall in love with the people that you work with a lot of times when you're younger because you're you're stuck in a restaurant. You're stuck in an amusement park. Why kind don't of we have that down the Cape? I don't know. I've never been to Cape. you got to come. Yeah, I've heard. I'm going to Newport this summer for my cousin's wedding. Not the same, but also cool. Okay. All right. And finally, we have our mystery song. And everybody's like, what is it? What is it? Songs. Songs. Uh, we're going to combine two. Oh, you say it like Sansa. Songza. Songs. Songs. Huh? Songs. Did is that how I said it? You said songs. <laughs> songs. 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 Uh, we're gonna pair Eleanor Rigby and Penny Lane together mm-hmm. and call the show Eleanor and Penny or Penny and Eleanor. Penny and Eleanor. Penny, Penny and Eleanor. P and E. Which is just P if you say. <laughs> Yeah. Well, B and E is breaking and entering, so P and E is Penny and Eleanor. Yeah. And they've been best friends since you ever. know. Yeah, ever. And maybe it starts with like the vlogs that they started when they were a kid. You know, when like the camcorders were first starting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. When or year two thousand, they were probably doing digital. Whatever. I think that this is what I love Riverdale, but it's called Riverdale for a reason. This is Betty and Veronica. Yes. So Penny and Eleanor. Penny and but Eleanor. But Eleanor probably just goes by L because what yeah. person in this decade is named Eleanor? And Penny's is like, they call her Pens or Pen? Pen. P? Do they call well, her Penny's P? Penny's probably already short for Penelope. Oh, you're thinking Penelope Lane. You don't think Penny was short for Penelope? I think there are people just named Penny. Really? Yeah. I think. Who? Who? Oh, I met a bunch of Pennies, but I never thought to ask if their name is Penelope. Am I, I an idiot? I don't think I've ever met a Penny. Really? Yeah, where'd you meet one? Uh, one of uh, my bachelor party in San Diego. She was on her bachelorette ow, party. Oh, Penny! <laughs> and my uh, my cousin fell in love with Penny on her bachelor bachelorette party. Cool. <laughs> but I didn't ask her if her name was Penelope. You should have. Yeah. You should have thought better at the time in your sober mind. I'm sure. So, what does Penny and Eleanor look like? You think it's like a Betty and Veronica? You think it's dark like a Riverdale? No, not dark like that. Just Betty and Veronica, like in terms of best friends. Like, I'm talking about When does com- it start? Does it start in high school? Does it start in college? I think they've been best friends since they were five. Okay. Maybe they're next door neighbors even. Like kind of that story that we hear, like the love story, but this isn't the love story. Okay. Although it could be a love story, but I, I was more just picturing best friends, grow up next door, have the ear thing, you know, cops yeah, yeah, yeah. as phones from across the window. Except now they actually have cell phones. Because it takes place now, I guess. Yeah. Would they have like a YouTube channel together or something? Is this like yeah. a Disney Nickelodeon kind of show? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. And then do we, when it's, so does it start at like age five or does it start when they're, No, you I know, think it starts older, but we can flash back always. But I think it starts maybe when they're 13. Oh, I was just going to say 13. Okay. Yeah. Same page, same page. Same page, same yeah, page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes, maybe there's only six seasons and it goes until they graduate high school and maybe they have to go, they say goodbye to each other at different colleges and maybe they go to like rival colleges that could be kind of funny wow. and set up a college season where they go to like Williams and Amherst or something, the smart kids college or like yeah. Harvard and Yale or something like that. Harvard. Or like what's, what's close to Harvard? Boston college, BU, uh, Northeastern. Yeah, that's close or Tufts or Tufts, MIT. MIT. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so maybe we could set up a call, but the, like the really heart wrenching C- C- series finale is them saying goodbye as they go off to college because it's the first time they've ever been apart. And then it's, but I'm because it's really them five minutes from each other. Right. They had, the, <laughs> the colleges are next to each other and they can still talk from their dorm rooms. 
That's funny. Yeah, not bad, right? We did we it. We did it. We did it, yeah. What if Beatles songs were TV shows? This is Hypothetical Questions with Josh and Roxy. Roxy on Josh. Josh is... Rocks on Josh's box. <laughs> Rocks on Josh's box. Uh, you guys can subscribe to the channel, Collider Podcast. Subscribe to the podcast feed. The Collider TV Talk has its own. The main show goes up on Friday with myself and Thad Williams still trying to get Roxy on the show. This week, we'll have Sinead DeFreeze coming in. Yay. Talk a little Narcos Mexico, which cool. was so good. And uh, all that kind of fun stuff. You guys can follow me at Josh Makuga. The Afternoons with Josh and Ken is another podcast I do with the lovely and amazing Ken Napsock. The Josh Makuga Show on YouTube. Uh, Collider Live, Collider Sports Time. All that kind of fun stuff right here on Collider. Roxy, where can the good people find you? You can find me everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Also, I do YouTube reviews on my YouTube channel. Everybody says I always don't talk about it. It exists. And over <laughs> on my Patreon as well. And you're on Collider Live. And I'm on Collider Live. Monday through Wednesday with, with you. Exactly. All kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for listening, watching. Tweet in those questions, hypothetical questions to us. Uh, we're going to talk about the Simpsons next week because Michael Tabone uh, sent us in a fun Simpsons question. So we'll get we to that cool next week. We have a cool twist on it. And we have a cool twist on it. Uh, next week and hopefully have a less eventful lunch, but maybe we'll have a more eventful lunch. I we'll, don't know how that's possible. We'll talk about it on Collider Live next Monday. Thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Thank you.